Okay, and we're back. And oh. chat, we're back. Hi, thank you for sticking with us for the break. Uh, Daisy's there too, being a disembodied yeah. voice. I'm I'm here too, being a disembodied voice. Um, and uh, Tater has an announcement. Whenever we're ready to get this shit going. Well, also Summer's here. Yeah, I'm here too. Still in the room. We just yeah. played a, a spirited round of uh, Elizabeth Bathory Trutherism with us with some Resident Evil mixed in there. Yes, we did. <laughs> which I was very proud of. Oh, look at that! Hearts yeah. for Summer. Um, yeah. Or maybe that's Hearts for the Cats. Oh. Uh, that's, uh, Hearts for Summer. Uh, Daisy, am I putting you on the screen briefly? You you can. I just have I just have an announcement. It's a thing. It's the same announcement we have every time we have an interview. Uh, but this time, I'm not going to deliver it. Tater's going to deliver oh, it. Oh, very good. Tater, take it away. Thanks, Tater. Summer. <laughs> Can... Hi, to everyone watching this on YouTube. <laughs> everyone watching this on YouTube. <laughs> you may see Dom and Daisy on the show all the time and might think that they do everything here. Well, you would be wrong. You would be so wrong. You'd be extremely incorrect. In fact... <laughs> There's a whole team of people who come together every week around the guests' uh, work, their stuff that's available on the internet, and a bunch of other insider information that we may or may not uh, know from friends uh, to come up and cur curate the questions that we ask all of our guests. Um, so what I'm really trying to say is if you hear a question that you like, uh, if you hear uh, Summer laugh, um, if, if you think that this is a good interview or whatever, don't thank me don't well, excuse me <laughs> don't think tater don't think daisy and don't think dog thank the sleuths <laughs> back to the regularly well stuff. tater thank you for Broadcast, knowing everyone. that tater the stuffed animal capybara <laughs> thank you for knowing that uh uh lots of people tater. write the questions all right yeah it's <laughs> not just so tater knows <laughs> what is happening death yeah that's 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 me every tuesday <laughs> Death Loris woke up from a, a fever migraine and <laughs> was confronted by Tater, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, With now that, that that's out of the way, <laughs> you want to actually get an interview in? Sure. <laughs> Let's go. Summer. Uh, so, as people might be able to tell, you're in Tallahassee. I am. Because you were in the room with me. I am. And you are a grants manager. I am. Um... What is, what what is something? What's like the big thing that you wish more grant applicants knew before they applied? Um, that you have to start out knowing what you're gonna do, which seems like a very simple question to ask. But filling out a grant application is just filling out a form. There's suggestions for ways that are like more effective, but basically you have to know what you said you were going to do, like. I wish people remembered what they said they were going to do. They don't even have to remember it. They can go back and look at the application. But yeah. for some reason, filling out paperwork, I mean, it's just its just homework. It's like homework the job, but fine, you know? Uh, but for some reason, looking at paperwork is like the worst physical thing a human being can experience. It's like worse than a thousand car crashes. Like, so I wish that people would have more confidence in their ability to do that. Does that make sense? It does. It does. People get yeah. very scared and overwhelmed by a grant application, but, like, it's not scary. It's just asking you what you want to do and how you want to spend your money. Like, and chances are there's a person like me forced to sit in a chair and answer questions, like, begging people to apply. Just call them. There's yeah. literally no downside. Call them as many times as you want. Like, that's the cheat code. What What's probably the most, like, uh, fulfilling uh, grant you ever uh, managed or oversaw? Well, any individual grant is kind of, like, all basically the same. But, like, it is overall pretty nice to be able to help people get arts money. I mean, you're, our whole ethos in this country is about making money hard to access, like, mm -hmm. and making people jump through hoops. But the forms um, are scary. So, yes, that's, yeah. the forms are scary by design, especially if you're getting money from the government. Thanks, but, Ronald Reagan. I know, <laughs> among yeah. others. Like, uh, yeah. so... For me, like, the most satisfying part of any grant application is, like, when somebody gets their cash and they can go do the shit they're actually good at doing. Yeah. Like, there's absolutely no yeah. reason 
why filling out the form should be the barrier yes. to yes. people. So true. Okay, this oh is God. something that I ran into when I at my old job, which was uh, processing grants at the state level, um, where you'd run into like a guy who runs a Laotian festival, and this guy runs a Laotian festival. You know this dude? I know this dude. Uh, like he does it, you know, like, and he's got a lot of barriers, but he cannot figure out the form. But there is absolutely no reason why the form is like the thing that you can't right. like cross, you know. So it's very satisfying to like run into one of those, like somebody who's really struggling with this form, and to like be like, no, it's just a form. Like, let's knock this thing out. Like, that's fun. I I think in in like folk life side of things, it's like. Does little do people in Little Haiti win awards because it's a hotbed of vernacular culture, or because Someone they knows all know how to form. fill out each other's forms? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You it's, know what I mean? Uh, filling out a form is like a secondary, like extra skill, and a lot of people seem to reach this like threshold when really the form is just answering the questions. Like yeah. normally, you can get away with answering the questions yeah. you want to answer, but on grant forms, you have to answer the question they want, and you have to also tailor it a little bit that's like where mm -hmm. the secret spice comes in you know you have to yeah you have to be not a strong writer per se but you have to be able to write clearly and efficiently they're not like floridly mm -hmm. um yeah and you yeah. also have to be able to do a little bit of research enough to figure out what this institution actually wants um for example my job had to submit this application we got to submit for like uh, arts education like projects. We were asking another foundation if we could have some money and then we were going to give that money to arts teachers for like an art project. And so this foundation is like, it's Duke Energy. So their whole deal is um, like clean energy, which has nothing to do with an art project. But so when you mm. apply, you have to be like, oh, well, when we did this before, some of the art teachers, they did a community beautification project. That's the kind of stuff you like, right? Uh, and they liked it enough to give us some money. Not all that we asked for, but some of it. Like, mm -hmm. that's the kind of research that you have to do if you're writing a grant. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Daisy, you got follow-ups? This is... I do. I do. And also, like, I I just think it's interesting that there's... It's so... Uh, it's so not about the big picture. It's about this, like, very small beans task it of, is. like, filling it out. But I wonder if people have, like, trauma from job applications. It, like, a it's grant, very I think similar. That's, I think that's, like, part of it because, I mean, you know, job applications are terrible. It's <laughs> and like it's what, what have you been working on this week, Daisy? <laughs> yeah, a job application. But it's, a very, it's very much like a value judgment um, yeah. where... And, and I think anytime you're, like, competing for money feels like a value judgment when this is so personal like a lot of this art this expressive culture is so yeah. deeply and personal and folklore like, especially like yeah um, yeah yeah well not only a job application but a budget like yeah like, might right. as well just blow your brains out but it, it's <laughs> yeah. really it's like yeah. not that complicated you yeah. know <laughs> i feel like i've been saying this a lot lately but um if anybody is trying to figure out like what they want to do with folklore like there are a lot of people who need grant writers. Like, and if you're not afraid yeah. to fill out oh. the form, mm -hmm. like, and fill out the form and then make yourself a to-do list with the other stuff you have to do. Like, oh, in six months, I have to write a progress report. Like, I'll do that in six months. You know, like, there's a lot of need for yeah. that. It's actually pretty easy yeah. to find a slot to fill. And know. it's also cool because then you're still, like, working aligned with the artists that you're already or the expressive culture that you may already be interested yes. in you get what they want yeah <laughs> you know like you can kind of be that go-between so yeah. yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah actually that'd be really good i i have a couple of follow-up questions here based on this specifically what grant application systems does your office use and does it have an integrated signature option that is a good question. Oh my god. Um, so I got kind of spoiled at my last job because they have this whole DOS grants system that everybody has to use, and I complained about it a lot of the time, but it's actually pretty nice. So what we use now, I, I understand that like two years ago, they had a thing where every single person had to submit a physical binder with stuff, which I am extremely relieved to not have to deal with because, first of all, yuck, like binders. No, what? Second <laughs> Where of all, are you storing that? that? Yes, literally, binders. He, a stack literally. of binders. 
Uh, oh my God. And not only that, but it introduces this like bias, you know, and how nicely you made your binder. And obviously, yeah. the people who need yes. the money the least yeah. are the people who can make their binder look the nicest. Like, and the people who need this money yeah. to like hold a festival are the people that are just like throwing mm-hmm. it together. Um, so that's not ideal. We just switched before I got hired to using submittable, which is okay. Um, you kind of have like. You set up a form for people to submit the original application and then you make additional forms that are like the other stuff they have to do. So it's like fine. Um, It's hard because people seem very confused about logging into a separate thing, which I understand. So um, that's not ideal. I think it might have a signature option, but I have not figured it out and I haven't figured out if it like costs more or not. Um, so right now I have to like set it up as an Adobe e-signature situation. And, like, that's kind of a hassle, but um, well, not like follow-up. so much of a hassle. <laughs> another follow-up to that is whether or not you've contracted uh, a package with DocuSign and what was the cost per unit, but it sounds like you haven't. No, I have not. It's just been regular <laughs> uh, Adobe e-signature. If you can't tell, you had a very... I would have laser known. focused uh, sleuthing team this yeah, week. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, <laughs> like, all right, we got great right. questions. <laughs> but I think, I mean, those questions are are your answers are useful to those questions because it's like part of that hidden dialogue of our like grants technology. Management. And yeah, stuff like people like. don't yeah. get that. Yeah, they're like, can't I just give you the piece of paper? And you're like, actually, no. Um, you're like, you it's all about the used. record. I feel Elizabeth Bathory would agree with me on that one. Yes. Like, yeah. What the fuck are you yeah. talking about? And I'm like, yeah. sit down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was born in 1560. Hungary was three parts. It was <laughs> amazing. It was bananas. <laughs> Love it. Uh, next thing I want to ask. Sure. Um, as someone who studied the history of uh, the Florida Folklife Program. I did. And I never showed you my project either. You never did. <gasps> is, is it gone forever? Reveal. No, it's not on me. I realized I forgot to put my name on it. So Interesting. Yeah. And nobody told me to do anything. So, <laughs> But yeah, you can see it if you want. I did a, a cool. research on the history of the Florida Folklife Program. How do you see Amazing. that uh, history of the Florida Folklife Program reflected in the like the modern incarnation of the fest- of the Florida Folk Festival? Well, uh, I was kind of... Okay, so the whole reason that I decided to do... Okay, the real reason I decided to do the history of the Florida Folk Festival is because I threw out a vampire's thing, and they were like... <laughs> they were like... How can I make this more vampire based? Well, here's... Like, I was like, whatever, I already have what? a job. Yeah. What are you guys going to yeah. do? Like... And yeah. they were kind of, they didn't tell me no, but they were kind of like, mm, we don't really have anybody who can supervise that. Like, hey, hey, that happened to me in grad school. I wanted to write my dissertation oh my about Wonder Woman at first. Oh, uh, I'm yeah. sad for you. I know. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, yeah, we don't really have anyone who would do that. I'm like, not the mythologist? I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, like, Anybody? I don't think so. <laughs> And I, the only person who was close to doing it was this professor that I took their class, and then every single day in class, I was like, what the fuck is anybody talking about? <laughs> I literally went an entire class being oh like... Oh my god. And it was, a th- it was very theory heavy. It was history of the body, which I thought I would be interested in, but then yeah. I would be sitting in class, and I would have read the thing, and written a response yeah. and she hated all of my responses and i was like uh, i don't know what you want like yeah, you're getting something weird yeah like could you guys explain what you want me to turn in because clearly what i'm doing is not doing it for you so i'd be sitting in class and i would be like listening to other people talk and i would be i would be like i have to look up i would have to have like a dialogue of letters to even start having formulating a response to yes. one person and you guys are just shooting it everywhere but okay. Anyway, so I was like, yeah. I cannot have that. So I was like, okay, I need to pick something I can do at work. And I do like folk life. That's not a lie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, it's fun, you said. Yeah, it is fun. And yeah. I do I do yeah. really like it, and I love the folk festival. But so yeah. when the reason also that I picked it is because when I first started at that job, there was this little switch where the, the you already know this, obviously, but the... Folk Life Program was part of the Division of Historical Resources, and there was a museum that was part of arts and culture where I worked, uh, and they they ended up switching it. And the reason that they switched what it... What museum was that? Uh, museum of Florida History. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Apparently. Huh, interesting. Very strange, because it's 
clearly a history museum. Also so. very strange because the history, uh, historical resources was just getting NEA money to pay a folklorist every year. Oh, but, yeah. But true. keep going. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know what their scam was, but it was some kind of scam. Anyway, they switched it say that. purely <laughs> because the NEA wanted to cut one check instead of two. Uh-huh. But I was kind of yeah. like, that's so crazy, because if you are if you have it in a historical, if you have the Florida Folklife Program in a historical context, like, it's a history thing. You know, yeah. the historical yeah. element is what's driving how you picture it, and it's a, about preservation, it's about, like, specifically things from the past. Uh, yeah. But then if it's in an arts context, you know, it's like, is folklore, is folk life alive, or is it dead? Like... And if it's here, yeah. if it's in arts and culture, it must be alive. And I do think I saw, like, a, a slight shift towards that, because you picked the guy, the skateboarders, right? Yeah. Is yeah. that something that you think would have worked if they were in the division of uh, historical resources? Oh, I don't... Because weren't they kind of conservative? Who? Historical resources. Yeah, well, I, I still think it would be up to, like... It's up to the council anyway. Oh, really? Yeah, but, um, like, it's up to, like, the like a board picks them. Hmm. Um, that being said, they've, like, gone on to, like, get a grant with Division of Arts and Culture. Uh, uh, they, they might be doing, like, an oral history project on skateboarding, like, with us. That was, like, a... That's very cool. Was a, but that was, like, a Sandy idea. You know what I really? mean? Really? See? So, yeah. Exactly. So, in many ways, yeah. like, them being situated as art instead of history kind of yeah. makes more sense for friend of the show, Zach and Moldoff. Yeah. <laughs> and evolving discipline. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, totally, totally. So that's, like, what I was trying to figure out, is, like, how do these institutional, like, minor decisions, like, shape the thing? Anyway, so what mm-hmm. I, the conclusion that I came to is, like, the this whole thing is trying to figure out what the purpose of folk life is. Why does the state care about folk life? What is it trying to accomplish? And uh, when they come up with the apprenticeship program, they decide it's about professionalization. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and they had a couple of missteps, like they did uh, learned it in back days and kept it with Lucretti Clark and the basket maker. Mm. Um, and so she was featured. They had a like a white oak basket maker. By the way, can I just say how much baskets have done for the Florida Folklife Program? <laughs> it's all baskets. And, and then, and then the, <laughs> the, uh, the, really the, the former director the, of the festival. Uh, before Elaine, John Kay, uh-huh. I was his GA at Indiana, and really? I curated, I like helped like co curated an exhibit about him about uh-huh. baskets in Southern Indiana. I was like, so many fucking Amazing. baskets. Yeah, like, yeah, the baskets are huge. Really, really into the, baskets. The baskets, baskets and also the Greek dancers. Well, like, well, they well. are uh, yeah. putting in work. I have to yeah, say, yeah, like <laughs> are, are the Greek dancers at like the festival you and I were at are yeah. like the Captain Picard Wharf generation of Greek dancers, <laughs> oh and like John John Lunius, or, uh-huh. John Lunius is like the 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 like Captain Kirk, Kirk Captain uh, uh, Mr. Spock oh of God. Greek dancers. Yeah, that makes sense. So okay, so back to the baskets. So there was this documentary, yeah. learned it in back days and kept it in like '85, I think, where they featured. Lucreta Clark, who did white oak uh, basket making, and she talked mm-hmm. about how, like, uh, it she got so many orders after this PBS documentary aired that she basically couldn't fulfill it and was, yeah. like, not happy about it, kind of. She was like, yeah. my hands hurt. Like, I'm an old woman. Yeah, like, I, I don't really want to make yeah. this many baskets. I'm not I don't want to be famous. Um, yeah, she's, she wasn't ready to be famous. She was like, I don't, I don't no. want that. And I, then I the director had yeah. to, like, make a comment where they were like, we don't want to invade people's privacy. Um, and then they found Diamond Teeth Mary McLean. Diamond and Teeth that's Mary. when they were like, holy shit, like, that's what we need to be doing. We need to be revitalizing people's careers. Where was she out in the panhandle or something? I think so. She yeah. was living in a $40 a day shack, you yeah. know? So oh, she was yeah. this, like, former, like, blues singer, mm-hmm. circus traveler, yeah. basically, uh, who sang in, was it minstrel shows? Yeah, like the Chitlin Circuit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And so then she had retired and, like, found religion and, like, gotten married and was living in like pretty dire straits squalor, and yeah, yeah you, yes it was squalor uh but then the florida folklife program like rediscovered her and like reintroduced her to this festival circuit and she like you know then went on to have like a huge a second resurgence mm-hmm. of the career in her oh, yeah super was, old yeah that's when oh, suddenly they were like oh we gotta yeah. like get people's you know this needs to be a right. vehicle for professionalizing folk artists yeah. so when I was at the folk festival, it's like you have to get the apprenticeship, you have to go to the Florida Folk Festival a couple times, you get promoted to the next stage, 
then you get plugged into like the bigger folk circuit and then hopefully you go up for like the national heritage award yeah or like the lee boys just played oh, uh they headlined a festival in uh in uh newfoundland oh good for them. yeah 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 but but because they started on the folk life stage did the other stages now they're the philadelphia folk festival the stan rogers folk festival yeah and they're doing like every other place's folk festival now exactly like you're saying this is Honestly, this is super helpful just trying to picture, like, by scale, the influence of what a folklorist does at a state level, but also just, like, what the kind of, I don't know, resurgence around folk life is doing for people. Like, taking it up to those different levels, if you're thinking about professionalization yeah. or music or whatever. Um, I don't know. I didn't think... I always kind of wondered, like, how does somebody become the person who feels that they can apply for an, an NEH grant that appears like, to be the job of the folk you know artist, and it yeah and some of that yeah yeah and some of that is that you start on this smaller level of like connecting with the people in your state and who, also you figure out how to write a grant and then you start getting yeah. grants for your thing exactly like, like mm -hmm. i don't want to tell tales out of school but there's an artist that we got and it kind of once we saw like her work samples it kind of and like other folklorists have like come to the festival and like seen it too and just been like holy shit get her one of every program like she's fucking thanos yeah. like have her win yeah. one of every award <laughs> and send her oh resume to fucking dc for a national award because wow. it's like oh, she's shit. good talented enough but she also needs to build out like the resume yeah. of i did i got yes. the big three in florida i've done these museum residencies blah 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 you know yes. You know what's funny, That's but cool. not maybe not funny, but Diamond Teeth Mary McLean, they had her sing Old Folks at Home. I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have done that either. I wouldn't have done that. Yeah. I was like, she certainly put her old, her, you know, which is the, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know if everybody in the chat knows about that, but that's like. The, the chat probably doesn't. So if, yeah, it, well, one or two lines of explanation would help. Well. Yeah. The center of the Florida Folk Festival used to be in White Springs at the Stephen Foster Memorial Park, and it's the Stephen Foster Memorial Park because Stephen Foster, who wrote songs like Old Susanna, was a minstrel singer, and he mm. happened to mention uh, the Swanee River in one of the songs uh, called Old Folks at Home, and Old Folks at Home became the Florida State song, and it's also a song about, uh, like, written from the perspective of a enslaved or formerly enslaved person wishing to be back on the plantation so very much like, if you've seen disney's mm. song of the south oh yeah i was gonna say one that's of those very, scenarios yeah. i'm like yeah mm. i mean she does so I, I forget what year this was like 2005 or something like that i'm making that up i have no idea what the date is but the battle of mohach was 1526 uh <laughs> uh yeah they were like it. it's a yeah. win for us to have this you know found this blues singer like or this you know singer yeah. Yeah. toiling in obscurity let's get her to sing a minstrel song i don't know i, went... yeah, I don't think yeah. that one held up to the test of time uh, yeah not good not good but interesting this has been really fascinating thanks yeah because dom doesn't tell me about this stuff <laughs> what dom doesn't tell me about all these levels that there are that you need to like, figure I, I, out. You'll and the see network's Daisy too. one year. You'll be at the Florida Folk Festival. <laughs> yeah, and you'll see like, and I'll be like Patty oh. League do his his annual. Here we are at the beautiful, and then he like spits on his like <laughs> next to his foot. <laughs> Stephen Foster Folk Culture Center. You know, <laughs> they're like take a look at our super Amazing. racist dioramas. Oh my god! Yeah, someone like, was like, oh, I went oh saw the diorama. Like, yeah, someone last year was like, I went saw the dioramas. I'm like, did and you? Like, yeah. you did? Oh no! That's great. Fine. Like. Mm, what'd you think? They have yeah. a secret one, by the way, that's they took down for that being too down. sexual. Yeah. No. It's good. It's like a But I only run one of these stages. Yeah. No, <laughs> he's Yeah. He's victimless and, in this. And it's or just a victim, the, and I'm just, and I'm what? You're a victim of it, arguably. Uh, yeah. Not I mean, no, not a victim. No. What the next but anyway. Question? Hey, what is yeah. the next question? Daisy, I think you got this one. Yeah, I got I got the next question for you. Um what can you tell okay, I feel like I might say this wrong, but what can you tell us about Gerard von Sweeten and how can he stand in for the Enlightenment's hatred of folklore? Which That's a good question. Chat which uh, chat if 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 you know <laughs> this command, let let some <laughs> let summer in on on an inside joke. Daisy hates the Enlightenment so fucking much. It's really? become an inside joke. Yeah. Well, okay. Here we go, here we go. Okay. Enlightenment, okay. all the smart said I <laughs> 
Well, I was telling everybody here in the break that I did, had no idea how long my spiel was going to take, so I had a second yeah. half about the packaging of the vampire myth. Um, it, it takes a second to get to Gerard Van Sweeten, but Elizabeth Should Bath we go? Let's go oh. for it right now. Let's do go it. For it. Go for okay. it. Go yeah. for it. Elizabeth go Bathory. <laughs> well, yeah. so our conceptualization of Elizabeth Bathory is that she's a vampire, and we think of that like... That's what we imagine that she was accused of. And we, you know, we don't believe that, of course, because we're very modern and rational people. Even though if society collapsed, we'd be doing this shit in 10 years, max. Like, all this shit. Uh, which is what I think every time I read about this stuff. So, yeah. but like, according to their definition, is Elizabeth Bathory a vampire? And their definition is different from ours. Um, even saying their definition is a little bit vague, because mm. vampires yeah, are like, hyper-local. Witches are international. Yeah. They yeah. go from place to place. You catch it with true. But vampires That's are true. very mired in their location. Um, and so a vampire is kind of like... Like, they they would not have considered Elizabeth Bathory's story to be reminiscent of vampires because, like, the whole concept of someone torturing or, like, seeking out torture or even bathing in blood is like... Like, a vampire doesn't do that shit. A vampire is a corpse who came back to life. I mean, think about what that means to a culture of people that don't embalm. Like, vampires are dumb. They, and they right. kind of do anything. They, literally, a vampire will do whatever you need a vampire to do. Whatever you need explained, you can say that a vampire did it. Like, you've got unexplained pregnancies, unexplained illnesses. Okay. Any old shit. This is sort of like, you keep you keep dropping stuff and you or so you hear things drop at night and it's the ghost it's not the cat it's not whatever. the ghost it's like it's the vampire and, like. and yeah right only yeah only in this context it would just be the vampire is like or i don't know it's like a, a, a gremlin like yeah. stealing your equipment or something but you're just using that term to mean lots of different kind of spectral or yeah. supernatural unexplainable activity <laughs> Yes. Um, okay. And also part of vampires is that because they do basically anything, they're kind of like equal opportunity chaos causers. Like, so sure. drinking someone's blood that we consider to be like the central feature is really just sort of one weapon in their overall, you know, they'll spoil your crops. They'll make you sick. They'll steal yeah. your health. Like, and they can also drink your blood, but like, that's kind of our literal interpretation. We have a concept of differentiation where things can mean different things in different contexts. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. they didn't have that. So, like, when we understand, like, drinking blood, like, you're literally drinking it and your teeth must be different to facilitate that. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, well, you're, like, stealing someone's health, you know? So they're, yeah. they're not as literal right. as we are. Okay. And you also yeah. have a factor... That some of the secondary sources that I'm reading are saying that Hungary doesn't have vampires. Which I personally feel like is kind of a complicated claim. Um, because historical Hungary is hmm. so large. Yeah. Like, and you also have, like, the borders are constantly moving. You just said in the first half you of can, the show there were three Hungaries. They're literally, yeah. 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 Uh, and and also, you can only, yeah, you can only say something like that, too, if what the, you mean by vampire is the modern conception of vampire. Well, and the then thing. maybe you could go back and make that you could maybe make that claim, but yeah, even your point that still stands seems of to like be the claim that they're kind of making. It's like, what's the deal? Yeah, you're Plus, you're reading backwards into history. Yeah, with a, exactly. With a modern lens. Yeah. Plus, you have like all these movements of people in and out, mm -hmm. you know, and especially movement from people coming up through the Balkans who do have vampires. So I'm kind of like, you're telling me that people weren't bringing vampires up through the Balkans? Like, I'm like doubt, you know? Um, yeah. So. I think when people say that also that they're saying like the Magyar ethnic group that is associated with Hungarian statehood did not have vampires. Mm. But you know, in an American folklore context, all the folklore that's in the geographic region of the Americas is American folklore. I mean, is it? So I'm yeah. kind of like, yeah. I don't know if I agree with that. Um, and if you say that Hungary didn't have vampires, they definitely had some stuff that was vampire adjacent. Like, they had a falling star that could go in your chimney, like, and take the guise of a person and steal your health. Cool. Like, okay, I guess that's not a vampire because I would a love to see is... the Pokemon of that. I would also. Oh, yeah. I think it's Jirachi. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's like, okay, I get, like, what makes that not a vampire? In fact, in this yeah. book, Countess Dracula, there's an account of at least one guy in Hungary in this time frame who came back from the dead and harassed local maidens. Like, okay. 
uh, and tried to get in bed with his wife. So it's like, okay, if that guy's not a vampire, I don't know Andrew what the Palmer. fuck he is, you know? Yeah, so, right. Yeah. I'm, kinda, I'm, I'm like, doubt. Um, but it's complicated. Like, they, they very much did not view this as being a vampire tale. However, if you flash forward to the 18th century, uh, the situation is totally different. Like, the Habsburgs team up with all these other people in, uh, the Poland, Lithuania, the rest of the Holy Roman Empire, like, fucking everybody else. Uh, and they, they push the Turks out of, uh, Hungary. And they finally claim all this territory for themselves. Yeah, after, like, a 20th battle fucking of Fucking finally! Yeah. After, yeah. like, 500 straight years or 400 or whatever I said before <laughs> when I was yeah. looking at my notes. Uh, <laughs> but now this, like, gap that already existed is, like, significantly wider you know hungary's been decimated their population is extremely low they have basically no roads like uh they their economic output is like really low because people can't take their goods to market they used to yeah. say the hungarian farmer is asleep at his plow boo mm. you know they got all yeah. the, they got all the the, the the psychotic calvinism and none of the factories like england yeah, yeah. so they're yeah. kind of so now the Habsburgs are on some totally different shit. They're they're into the Enlightenment shit. They're onto the enlightened yeah. absolutism shit where you like mm-hmm. build your government as this like scientific yeah. entity and like human exceptionalism. All... Yeah, do yeah, it like you're the closer basically okay, the part of the reason I hate the Enlightenment is that it Because you like it's marsupials. Hard... No, no, no. Well, maybe a little bit, but also <laughs> They're gonna get there. Also... Okay. They're gonna get there. I'm but intrigued. Also... Well, I don't like it because it, um, the Enlightenment basically let people, it, it basically said <laughs> there is a way to get close to God th- and that you could even as a human be in proximity to God where before that most religions conception of like what this God or a higher power would be is that it was separate from, you could not reach God. God operates in a plane above us and we are not. God affects us, Just do but your we are not. And, and don't look we're up. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're yeah. not. Yeah, there's. We could never have that power. But then the Enlightenment came, and people said, "God talks to me, though, so I must be God's <laughs> special little boy." And then, and, and then, then they, everybody went. That out. And then, that's, and that's a spot on fucking. Uh, John uh, Locke here. Yeah, <laughs> Cotton Mather <laughs> impression. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but. I could be God's special little boy. And then what happened is like a million different, you know, religious break, you know, breakages happened from this. And then that's why we have a bunch of little special little boys with all their different special little religious names. I have um, always. You know, <laughs> this is all. This I is need to pro- look into this is it. Like, this is like Protestantism. This is like all of these. So this is why there's all of these different sects. Like I am the special little prophet who mm-hmm. can now actually has a special little relationship with God. Uh, and therefore my proximity to God, I can determine everybody else's proximity to God as well. And some people say that, that it has to do with the way that you, the way that science works. Um, but also the science is really just there to justify my proximity to God. And it's also there to like reinforce slavery. <laughs> it's there to reinforce all of these other like hierarchies that deter that have basically uh, white supremacist hierarchy, basically. Yeah. So like okay. I, that's like my super super fast version Ima- of why I don't like the Enlightenment. All I'm gonna say is, imagine if you had to elect a Holy Roman Empire and half of the people thought like that, the other half didn't. Yeah, you have right. A you would have a war yeah. that goes on for like thirty years. Yeah, you would. Yeah, anyway, give or take thirty years, something like that. Yeah. Well, okay. So, so but, but the, well, and then this. Well, maybe you're going to get to this point, but the, the reason that this is really important and that it affects folklore, mm-hmm. or is that folklore is conceptualized as the leftovers, the the dirt, the soil, your proximity of the peasants. I mean, it was done in this yeah. kind of hierarchical like way where oh that you know the rich people don't have folklore we We're have our educated. own special yeah. elite traditions that are different we have elite folklore, culture but and everyone we have else elite has, culture, yeah, folk culture and everybody else has folk culture and so uh, go off from that because i think you're about <laughs> and to they're get, like folk leader or whatever like, yeah well yeah yeah so that's so also another thing is that in hungary the as I said before, the peak of the witch craze in Hungary is way later. It's 1700 yeah. to 1750. That's so insanely late. Yeah. Switzerland also had a really late one, but I don't know why. Because um, I don't know if they had been part of there. But, uh, so, right when the Habsburgs have leaned into their own enlightened absolutism bullshit, uh, they've mm-hmm. taken on this group of people that are like, 
basically further than that, like, as far as they've ever been, you know? And they're also getting really into their witch stuff. So the Habsburgs get into, like, their own wars for another, like, 40 years after this. But then Maria Theresa becomes the Holy Roman Empress in 1740, and she's like, we have got to get this shit under control. Like, we, it's honestly at this point embarrassing. Like, I'm embarrassed to go talk to France. Like, and that's where my <laughs> daughter is going. Like, yeah. So, first she handles the witch stuff. Like, which is, e- if you have witches and vampires, you should focus on the witch thing first because witches are alive and vampires are always dead. Uh, that's so, true. That's yeah. true. So, she. And inst- witches are universal and vampires and are local, so they can yes. call in reinforcements. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So they institute a rule where if you have a witch case, you have to elevate it to the highest court. And that really cuts down on a lot of that. Mm-hmm. And then she has to solve the vampire thing. But the vampire thing is more complicated because it's so different. Um, and also because they, you have a couple of relatively high profile, quote unquote, real vampire cases that take place in Serbia, uh, which is the bottom ring of the Habsburg Empire. And it's also an area that's going back and forth between Ottoman and Habsburg control. Yeah. So you have two guys in like 1720, like early 1730s, who are uh, Arnold Pale and Peter Plagojewicz. And both of these are very similar situations where like you have a lot of uh, interest. You've got like the, the Habsburg forces are very present here. So issues that the locals are dealing with get elevated to this like level of concern when they aren't being elevated there other places. So the locals want to dig up these bodies because, you know, one of them fell off a hay cart and died, which is the dumbest possible way of always to die. How fast could a hay cart be going? Like two miles an hour? Just hold on to it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that was Arnold Pale. Uh, anyway, so two different guys die. Uh, then other people also start to die. The villagers are like, we need to dig these people up. We think they are vampires. Uh, representatives from the Habsburgs come in, and they have to supervise this whole thing. And both of them write reports about these two separate incidences where they're like, I don't know, like, they dug up this corpse, and it did have a lot of fresh blood on it, like, and it had an erection, you know? What do we do with that? Like, he looked, that was a pretty common, like, part of it, you know? They're like, if they ever say that a corpse had wild signs, they're like, that's proof, and they all do. Just the the gases, (laughs) you know, of the situation. Just how your body works, yeah, yeah. Um, Yeah. But they're both kind of like, you know, and they write these reports that end up getting, like, publicized and, like, passed around Europe as being this, like, really interesting, like, crazy thing that people are doing. Uh, anyway, so Marie Theresa's like, we have to figure out this vampire thing. Like, we have to attack this at the source, basically. So she gets her personal physician, which is this guy named Gerard Van Sweeten, to go out and attend vampire trials. And by vampire trials, that's a bunch of people being like, you guys all dreamed that that guy was a vampire, right? Like, because I dreamed that. Like, I think we should dig him up. What do you guys think? Like, we should dig him up, we should put a stake through his heart, and we should burn him. And do other stuff, like, while we're there. You know? Just whatever we should do. Like, basically, like... Uh, poke him, just to make sure. Yeah, literally poke him, mouth, like, put a brick in his know. mouth, I don't know, whatever. Like, And <laughs> yeah. it's, it's different in every location. But so Gerard Van Sweeten, he attends a bunch of these. Uh, and then he goes back to Vienna, or wherever he lives, uh, and he writes this book called Ab Handlung Der Dessens des Gespin Star, which means Discourse on the Existence of Ghosts. This book is available in its entirety, I believe, in German, and I have not been able to find oh, an God English damn it. This translation. Is... Chat? This is what Chat, if you're listening? Oh my God, if anybody this has literally... one, I need it. I have been meaning to translate it, but it's so involved, you know? It's not yeah. It's not a simple job at all. Yeah. Like, this is like Meryl Kaplan's, like, uh, <laughs> I don't know, spectral presence enters my room and says... You should have learned the German, like Alan Dundee's told us all. Uh, like I do, the you need to learn them. Daisy, how are you being haunted by your advisor who is still alive? <laughs> I'm not. It's her spectral presence. It's, it's the ninety cats. Like, it's the ninety cats. <laughs> she's sending her energy at me to tell me this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so th- so then Gerard Sweeten writes this, and it it also triggers this like interest in vampires in Europe, like you know, uh, Augustine Calme. I think he actually wrote it before, but 
generally speaking, people are finding this very fascinating. And that's when Elizabeth Bathory's case gets brought back mm. up as, like, an evidence that, like, oh, they've always been doing this. And meanwhile, mm. you know, there's been, like, 150 years since all that shit happened. That's like, a long, People have that's been a adding a lot time. of stuff since then. That's when you add all the stuff about, like, bathing in blood and stuff. That's the Gerard Van Sweeten part of that question, and also the rest of my spiel. What, was there a second part to that question? Yeah, I think the second part of that question was uh, how he stands in for the Enlightenment's hatred of folklore, but I think he got there, He too. did. He did hate yeah. the yeah. folklore. He, yeah. Basically, what he yeah. wrote about in his book was like, okay, so they're saying that the body was, you know, a vampire because it was insufficiently decomposed, but it actually was kind of decomposed, and it was a cold winter, so, like, you know... Like, yeah, so he's mm, saying none he's, of He's trying none to apply real... enlightenment standards onto their right. stuff. To right, get he's it trying to, to make it up. into a science. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right, I got another question for you, and then I got a bunch of funsy questions. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm so glad that through all of this, it you didn't get here so that we could ask you this question, because <laughs> I'm, I don't know, I'm just, I can't wait. Okay. If you were going to write a novel about the history of so-called women's wrongs, TM, <laughs> including but not limited to Elizabeth Bathory, how would you set the record straight? Truth to light. On um, how would I set the record straight? Exactly as I've done here. Like with, <laughs> yeah, ideally with archival Bravo. footage. Or yeah. I don't have archival yeah. footage, but like letters from the archive. But again, yeah. Tony Thorne basically already did that. So just read that. But but you had some really important criticisms of that work too. I think that were you. you know could deserve more <laughs> nuance. Um, yeah, I mean I mean I, we didn't expect you to kind of like unfold the narrative over the whole time, but I think that that was like kind of the perfect. Yeah, way to, like, I think that kind of happened. Like, because there's no way that like right now you could have started that. No. So I'm glad that it kind of like became this like full circle moment. So friends, um, if you're watching sleuths. this on YouTube, <laughs> yeah, sleuths, friends, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, sorry you missed the first half of this, but uh, definitely tune into the show to watch the whole thing because sometimes you miss really amazing stuff like this. So. I don't know. We might. But to everyone who watched the whole four hours live, like yeah, you got that juicy context. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> man. I wish I had more time to edit. Yeah. There's so many like cool I know, things. Me I go, too. Like, I would turn this me into too. a cool like music uh, video or something. I, I still, I yeah, still I want to make too. a yeah. skate video from Zach's episode. That would be so. <laughs> when cool. I get anyway, free time, I think about, I think about that too. Um. Cool. Okay. Well, Funsy so questions. That's like, yeah, that's the end of our like more like meaty questions. We got some fuzzy questions for you. Yes. Um, Dom, you want to take you want to take these on? Okay. Yes. First, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. First off, okay. uh, what's the first thing you would do, or not first thing? What would be your uh, some of the cool things you would do if you were the same height as Lady Dimitrescu? I would bend to go through doors. Oh, oh, oh dramatic! Oh, <laughs> holy shit! Oh, sorry. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Too tall for this door. <laughs> <laughs> that would be very intimidating and powerful. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna you skip around to... on these. I'm gonna skip around okay. on these, uh, and then yeah, and then I'll let you do that last, Daisy. Okay. What's the okay. best naming convention for pets? Um, whatever comes to mind. The most. I have ten cats. By <laughs> okay. The way. Uh, not ninety, oh God, but I have ten. ten? Yeah. Eighty of those are spectral. <laughs> Don't joke. <laughs> That's not funny. Oh God, like, okay. it's oh obviously gotten out of hand to this point. Oh, oh, nope. Chat approved Thank of you. that one. <laughs> Chat's into it. Yeah, 10 cats. The newest one's name is Catboy, and that doesn't line up with anything, but we named him that because he's a little lad. Oh. And then before, we had a trio that we bottle fed uh, called Pablo, Gomez, and Raul. Raul's Aww. the punchline of the group. And who oh. up to that? Yeah. That's, That's only mm, four of them. So yeah, Cute. they're like all over the place. Love, it. love cat boy. Cat boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> love that. Um very good. Summer, do you have a favorite? Um also, this came up organically and I looked in the camera oh, yeah, and smiled. Yeah. Do you have a yeah. favorite Habsburg fail son? Uh probably the guy whose blood was water. Oh, 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 fuck. Talk about this. Talk about this. Explain, explain. I don't know too much this? about this dude, but this is which, one of the guys. Which go Charles or Maximilian I honestly is. don't even remember. Yeah. I mean, it's just the one where they're like, he had two hearts. Because 
that's got some folklore tinges. Yeah. And so I would like to go back and see what they were seeing because also the human body could have like a lot of, I mean, the guy looked gross in his picture. Like, you know what I mean? I would like to get a little more clarity on that issue. I think they were exaggerating a little bit, but I would like to know what extent they were exaggerating. I know about him because uh, someone on Reddit pointed out that Daenerys Targaryen is as inbred as he is. And they were like, oh, I saw that too. I saw that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Okay. No, it's actually it's actually worse. It's even more. Hmm. So, like, so like theoretically, hearts. she should. So she should have like three hearts. Oh yeah. Daenerys Targaryen is more. Oh That's yes, what yes, they yes. Bought yes. The the final TV. season. They really needed yeah. to be covering the heart and blood water issue. If we if we have three more se- uh, episodes or whatever, four more, they episodes. would have been able to get. To yeah, 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 yeah. Probably, I fully yeah, believe it. Yeah, because what happened okay. was because the Dornish because the the Targaryens married the Dornish in order to. Add yeah. more zest to the bloodline, <laughs> and then her grandma's Dornish, so okay. she just yeah. married a distant. Yeah. It's like a loop. They looped. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, oops, we looped. <laughs> we have a final funsy question for you before we head into our fun little game that we're gonna play, which I think will be really good for this. Okay. Um, uh, if you're okay, if you feel comfortable telling. Oh, she does. She does. All right. So we've confirmed oh. that you feel comfortable telling this story. Okay. Um. We need, I need to know, and the chat needs to know how you saved Peggy Bulger's Wikipedia page. Peggy Bulger doesn't know about this. I was too much of a pussy to cop. And, and I will say, I will say, Peggy Bulger sends me all of like her ballots for like apprenticeships and uh, heritage awards mailed in. So, so I don't. Not, I think I, Twitch is not. I love you to death, okay. Peggy. Twitch is not on your radar. Yeah, okay. I get it. Yeah. Which honestly, the whole time that I worked at my old job, I was like, "Fuck, do I?" Do? It was like I was consumed with like whether or not I should tell her. Uh, I anyway, would, I would be consumed by that too. I and I didn't. Yeah. So Dom, if you ever want to throw it out there, knock yourself out. I might. Like, please we do. Might. I would really funny. like to hear how that goes. I'd uh, like to be there. Okay, so Peggy Bulger, <laughs> she was. What was her? She was the state folklorist, but she was like the first person to get the official funding to be the state folklorist. She was, yeah, she was the first yeah. government employee. Folklorist was a government employee, like the first state folklorist. Yeah, and that matters because it's about the institutionalization. That's right, the operationalization. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Anyway, so I was like looking up people who were on the folklore council, and I look at her Wikipedia page, and she, at the end of her biography, she has a surprisingly robust Wikipedia page. It says yeah, that the she's, director of the American Folklife Center, too. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. It says that she's an anti-vaxxer, and I was like, that's so crazy. Like, really? That's, like, it's, that's a weird thing to tack on the end of that. Yeah, yeah and, like, not With that it necessarily would have been a huge surprise to see yeah. that somebody that you randomly also folklore yeah. sorry but you guys seem like a very quirky bunch so yeah, it wouldn't yeah, yeah. be a huge surprise for someone to yeah. be an anti-vaxxer but i was like why would it like you i know this because i donate to wikipedia you have to have a citation every time they yeah, yeah. For money, i give them money yeah like yeah yeah so I'm entitled to do whatever I want. Letters for that, honestly, yeah, Chad. Honestly, honestly, uh, yes. <laughs> a vibe. Uh, so I'm like, I know they have to have, like, a citation for that. And yeah, I don't know even... where she, they would have gotten that. Like, even if she How was they know posting that? maniacally on her social media about her anti-vaxxer, yeah. like, opinions. Yeah. I know the they cannot. Social, social media doesn't count. Yeah, on Wikipedia. That's the thing. So That's I mean, the thing. Have to, like, said it in a, uh, an interview. And there's no citation. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. I need to get to the bottom of this. I think this is vandalism. So I look at the uh, oh my edits. God, and you can so all do this, amazing. by the way, and follow along. And oh. honestly, we also have the ability to do this live if you would like to do it. <laughs> um, follow these steps. <laughs> I know that's kind of going off book for you guys. Should I do this live? I mean, I think it would be... Could, uh, you were kind of set up to do that for the next thing through a web page, so maybe it wouldn't actually be that difficult. It wouldn't be that difficult, so we just gotta look away for one second. Yeah, look away for okay. a second. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, actually, it didn't even load. I still have to load it up. Okay. Um, so go to her Wikipedia page? Yeah. Yeah. This is so funny. <laughs> The chat is like cheering for this to be live. Everybody's like, "Do it okay. live!" Teacher, okay. Teacher, 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 live, so she live. has a robust <laughs> Wikipedia page, okay. right? Yeah. Uh, go to view history. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna. Or however you want to do it. Fuck You're the boss. We might have to like. Yeah, we have to move the setting a little bit so we can see the whole page, but it's yeah, yeah, it'll yeah, be fine. Yeah. I'll get there. I'll get there. It'll be fine. Um, the folklore is emergent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is very good. Okay. View history. Oh, yes. Okay. 
Uh, and so, <laughs> if so you'll look at this, you may notice that one particular name lean, comes lean, up. Lean in, you're off screen right now. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, you may notice that the a particular name comes up a lot, and it's this guy named Florida Ron, and his name is all over this page. And you also see places where Peggy Bulger looked at her Wikipedia page, saw something he added, commented on the page, which is, like, the worst thing you could do. Like, that's what this guy wants. She says, Oh, my God. I deleted the last sentence that is unattributed. In her later years, Bulger has become an avid moon landing denier. I am Peggy Bulger, and this is just ridiculous, and I will file a formal complaint if necessary. And she does it again oh, down here. Know. I know, she she's know. old. Come on. She like, know. Come on, dude. Uh, like, I was like, not I, dismissed yeah, from my position. Dismissed. I retired. Also, someone tacked on a sentence at the end of this file that says, that Bulger is an ardent fan of Donald Trump. This is complete BS. Anyway, I was like, oh my god, this goes deep. Like, who's this Florida Ron guy? I know. <laughs> but you can see oh, all of Florida Ron's Florida edits. Ron. He he made a strategic so choice. He... This is all of the times that Wait. Go ahead. Is he in Is he in red now because he's banned? He's been banned oh, he's because no I got either. him banned. This is my <laughs> Wikipedia. Yes! I own yes, this. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. Oh you can look god. at all the times that he posted things and it's what? all peggy bulger and yeah you can all, all s- only him yeah because you can go to their account and be like who are else are you editing and this and you can ed- also see the differences so this let's oh just God. say one where he adds 116 characters if you hit diff okay, looks yeah, like yeah, he yeah, added yeah. he sometimes he goes back and undoes his edits like he regrets oh, them not good so enough. in the past he, he said that. was dismissed he changed that to retired and then he added he's this. I don't. Him. Okay, who's Senator Henry Reid? Is he a bad person? Is that the joke I here? I, yes, I believe I so. Okay. Yeah, he also I mean... removed this thing. He said Bulger is an ardent supporter of President Donald Trump. Some of so these... he felt bad, but he I... wanted to like catch it be like less obvious. No, like... I think he's just a creative person. Some of these, it's upsetting, but they're pretty funny. Like I don't <laughs> like to have to say this. He he does the yeah. dismissed versus retired thing a lot. Um, That's so weird. That's so weird. Plus 99 characters. Uh, During the 2016 (laughs) presidential election, Bulger. Okay, so you can look at all of these. Go a little further down for one. Go a little further down. Wait. Yeah. Oh, okay, the, you pick one. one. Th- the 137, right? Or two, 223? What about yeah. 115? Yeah, okay. Bulger <laughs> is a lifelong survivor of Crohn's disease. Parentheses, a horrible gastrointestinal infliction that renders the individual incapable of controlling their bowel function. She raises money for research into that disease. She raises money for research! <laughs> this That's guy... so weird! And this is okay, I know at other times he say. added he added stuff where he was like, this one, okay, this one pissed me off because it did make me laugh. Where he he said, Peggy, poot, poot, bulger. <laughs> I was like, you son of a bitch. You can't keep getting away with it. <laughs> and, and, he, and he could not, thanks to Summer. However, yeah, here, well, queen. first of all, I got him banned. But here's another thing I would like to show you. If oh you skim God. through all of this, Peggy Bulger, but then you see Conway, <laughs> Arkansas. Now, why would this person edit a random town in Arkansas? Let's find out. Okay. And he so added. I'm, cor- I'm cordially inviting you to join the sleuthing team. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah, added. You are, you are right oh, I would love to, actually. Brock Thompson, oh author of The Unnatural State, Arkansas and the Queer South, a groundbreaking gay and lesbian history of the state and i say who the fuck is brock thompson like and i google it and this son of a bitch is somebody who worked at the library of congress with peggy bulger uh (gasps) what yes he is an old co-worker of hers and we can look him up he's got all the stuff but he did not start doing this until he quit that job and he went into real estate so you can look this dude up he, okay. Specifically, it's the guy who wrote Endo Natural State, Arkansas, and the Queer South. Um, and I tweeted at him once from a burner account that said, why are you harassing Peggy Bulger on Wikipedia? And he never answered. But he also never made a new account. <laughs> so, That's so weird. That's so weird. I don't That's know. So I was weird. just really, I was driven to defend no, women. Okay. Okay. I, <laughs> so I was like, like, this cannot stand. Like, like, <laughs> wait, do you think that he's like, he never I, did it again. Okay. 
The thing that's so weird is I'm trying to imagine him Florida like Ron. on Twitter. Florida Ron. He DeSantis. chose that. He's not from yeah. uh, Florida. He picked that because he knew she because moved to Florida was, and he was yeah, trying to throw like, people off the trail. Off the but he night. didn't oh log God. out. <laughs> he didn't log out. That's what? always yeah. what gets okay, you. Not kind of <laughs> this is so weird. Like, I'm trying to imagine being this guy on Twitter receiving that message <laughs> and being like, who knows the game? Like, <laughs> Because she's because her retaliatory tactic is to just fucking comment on your response on Wikipedia. And be like, wants Please stop to doing see what you. Yeah, you're being angry. Please. It's the worst possible thing. Peggy to do. again. God bless her amazing okay, scholar. I... Does not did not grow up hearing "Don't no. feed the trolls." Oh my god, like we did. She's like, I'm very upset by this. Yeah, like, you're feeding yeah, the trolls. I sure hope so. Oh like, my god, I kind of want to. I want to like clip this and show it to her and be like, you I have, have to go not been sure anyway. how. Yeah, how would I even start yeah. this? And in my mind, okay, my dream well, is now, always you to now. What you have now, the perfect. I mean, if you ever needed an introduction, <laughs> you have, like the people. That's true. <laughs> well, so good. We would be so happy to do that for you. Anyway. In but, my yeah. mind, I was putting together possible ways to like casually throw it out there, and like the thing that I, I was I'm putting. I'm the Peggy Bulger defender. Yeah. Yes. Putting. This is Peggy Bulger's defense attorney. <laughs> I was like thinking if I ever ran into Peggy, as I occasionally haven't done recently, but could in yeah. theory do, be like, hey, this is gonna sound nuts, but your Wikipedia so page, like, someone's been. I don't know if you know this, but I think someone is. <laughs> vandalizing it like and i think i know who it is like do you want to know like <laughs> and that's where i was like i don't think i can pull that like i don't know I don't if that's know. gonna play the way I that i imagine it's going to well because now like it's been a while since all this happened well, she also, yeah she also has commented on like back to that person so she obviously knows and it's obviously upsetting to her yeah so like like it's so maybe like, she does I know really about this know. like weird well, or, or like the, I could see it being weird of like, hey, I know this weird backstory of this person. It sounds like I <laughs> know him, and I'm like, I here? don't know him, but I feel as though I yeah. do. Yeah. Like, this evil like like my, my, Yeah, my like, old I, I know, <laughs> Look, I don't know this guy, but I know his hate. And that's how I could track him down. I said, like, I smelled no. him. Like, I said, or, I know. or to quote, oh, no. uh, to quote yeah. Dracula, I know where the bastard sleeps. When did yeah. so, okay, repeat this quote. I uh, know it's my Keanu Reeves impression. Oh, okay. I uh, know where yeah. the bastard sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bram Stoker's Dracula was kind of fun because Keanu Reeves and Winona Ryder were at the exact same level of British accent proficiency. <laughs> oh my god, they yeah, were true. both the two people where you're like, just don't do it. Like, just yeah, <laughs> walk it back. Just like yeah. they were yeah, like, oh more. my god, you're back, like from yeah. Transylvania. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You guys couldn't get a <laughs> couldn't get an accent yeah. coach in or something? Like it's yeah. fine. Just curious. Yeah. Like nope. <laughs> That's hysterical. Wow. This is an amazing piece. Like, I I don't know. I'm a big fan of collecting meta folklore, folklore about folklore. <laughs> Absolutely. And this hey, is like hey, wa watch the show next week for this more is, of that. This is like yeah, this is like a dream <laughs> like folklore find. Oh my god. <laughs> Like, wow. Daisy, yeah. I promise this is going to be a good one. I think this is so the good. first. Yeah, I know. One of the I first know. things I wrote down was the yeah. Wikipedia story. <laughs> yeah, like, that's so good. I mean, because in any other context, like this is a, you could just make this like, yeah, I found somebody on. It means so much more that you're telling it on a folklore show. Is what I'm trying to say. So Thank anyway. You. <laughs> Thank you. I'm for the hero that. of math. <laughs> like I'm the really defender are. of Peggy Bulger and you Wikipedia. Are. Yeah. Yeah. Along with yeah. my hard earned I love pennies. It. <laughs> You're like weird men. Stop commenting about women. Uh, stop Please, with your literally. lies. Like <sighs> Crow's stop disease it. is real and terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, we are visually on Twitch. We are set up for yeah. final penis. I have to um, go into your sleuthing document to pull up this link. Don't yeah, look at don't the look, questions. Don't look. Don't look. We're gonna reveal. It'll okay, be revealed. But go. um, while while you're shielding your eyes, perhaps I can ask you a question. Maybe. Yeah. Um. Okay. You can unshield. Have, have, have you ever made a tier list? Um. No. But uh, what I do in my own mind, instead of doing this, is I imagine the PowerPoints that I would force people to, historical figures, to sit through. 
Like, oh, that's very good. No, that's also. fascinating. Okay, that's and I love the, it. That's PowerPoint. I would deliver this all this shit to Elizabeth Bathory, and when I got to the part about weaving the rag, she'd be like, <laughs> "Oh no, that 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 made it through to history. That made it through hundreds of years later." Of and the all PowerPoint, the things, I would okay. make Bram Stoker sit through. Ten slides in, he'd be like. I was trying to be racist, and I would be like, <laughs> I know that. Like, I know. I obviously, know. <laughs> what we're talking about right now is Banicula, is the 10th slide for some <laughs> Thoughts? Very good. Very good. I don't feel no. like I need to explain anything about this concept. I think it pretty much speaks for itself. I got you. Yeah, I think, I think it does too, and I think that means that you are very well prepared to make a tier list with us. Um, so for those of you who don't know what a tier list is, or if you, you've never seen them before, they're a way of, um, it traditionally comes from ranking fighting game characters, weapons, you know, whatever, but um, we're just ranking stuff in everyday life now, which is folklore. Um, so we have curated a tier list. Um, it's on a scale of S to D. Um, so D is like dumpster fire, like the worst, like okay. nasty, it's terrible. And then S is like above A, it's like A plus plus, like superior, super, okay. all that stuff. Um, and then uh, in addition to that, it is ranked horizontally and vertically. So obviously there's like the vertical tiers, but you also put them next to each other. And so we have curated for you specifically best of the best uh universal monsters tier list you because know, I, we thought who better than to have horror queen here to talk expert. with us about monsters i have to say i would have thought you guys would have picked all the movie draculas oh we thought about it we thought about it. and i do have a we pitch for like, like did, did i have a pitch on the hammer here. dracula movies yeah. that would oh turn God. your hair white like keanu reeves in bram stoker's dracula Oh my god! Back, back me up that I that I also Dom proposed said movie Draculas. Yeah, Dom said, "What if we do movie Draculas?" Dom was right. we like, but but I, we also, like, I also know how much like, you love too- mummies. I. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. We were like, okay, we were like, "Is that too on the nose?" That was sort of our like, "Hmm, is that like, is that going to be too obvious?" I respect We're going to go your, too hard to vampires uh, and try to do like a Thank yeah, you. anyway. creative team. Anyway. <laughs> It what well, it came up. So where okay. where do you wanna do you wanna just go down the list or do you wanna yeah. pick your favorites first? Oh, just go down the list. And so, okay, you, down the list. And you get to de- you get to completely decide under what metric they are being ranked. Yeah. Got so, it. That's all up to you. Yeah. First off, is the creature from the Black Lagoon. Creature from the Black Lagoon. Well, okay. First of all, one thing to know is that around here they lean really heavily on Creature from the Black they Lagoon. They really do. They, yeah, it, does, they do. it pulls a lot of work. That and those underwater yeah, photographs, really also from Wakala Springs. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. it puts in the work. Um, I believe that the makeup artist for this movie was a woman, and I do have to commend them for putting a whole ass man in a rubber suit and then submerging him in water. Like so yeah, dangerous. Uh, Can you imagine the days? <laughs> They like, were just like, how, get like, in the water. Like, we'll pull you like out. Like, you've or we already won't. been sit- you've been sitting for ten hours in makeup. Now you have to go now get in the, water. the water. Like, uh, and oh, I also God. have to say, they filmed that one on location, didn't they, at Wakala Springs? Yeah. So yeah. I think this 30, one comes 30 minutes from here? later in the Universal Monsters canon, and so you have mm-hmm. better set pieces. Like, um, so I'm actually yeah. gonna, mm, I'm gonna say A. A, nice, solid, okay, solid. Uh. Bela Dracula, since well, you want to rank the Draculas by actor too. Well, I have to say, it's iconic, obviously. I mean, it's, yeah. it's obviously put in a lot of work. Um, Dracula is one of the earlier movies that they did. So yeah. it's very, like, yeah. on a soundstage. Uh, they also... So it's they, just a play, It right? is. Well, yeah. the book was written to be adapted into a That's play. True. And you can really tell... And he played Dracula on Broadway. On stage, yeah. Yes. Dracula's got a whole a separate history as a stage play that's harder to, like, access... It kills me every day, but it's fine. <laughs> Obviously, the movies are easier to, like, access. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Another interesting thing about this movie is that, like, I saw it, again, at Cap City a while back, and if you, it's like, they are not expecting you to follow a story. Like, they drop in plot threads, and then they're just like, fuck it. Like, they're not expecting <laughs> you to, like, remember what's <laughs> happening from one scene to oh. another. Like, okay. Honestly, that's kind of vampiric. It's, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Well, like, they like forget about a whole ass situation, and they're like, "We fixed it. You did not fix it." Damn. Like, the only thing I hate more than situations is, is forgetting about situ- them. Yeah, forgetting about a second situation. Um, I also, 
controversial, but I feel like the person who did more work for making this movie the movie that it is is Dwight Fry, not Bell Lugosi. <gasps> Dwight Fry Whoa. carries the movie. Is he? He's Renfield. Renfield. Okay. And he does a whole laugh. He's got a bit. He does stunts. He does everything. Bell Lugosi is not in in that batch. But Bell Lugosi is great because he was a socialist and an uh, anti-Nazi, and he was also like uh, basically treated like shit for being like foreign. I'm gonna put and him... we interviewed his granddaughter on the show. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah we did. Lynn. It was pretty sweet. It's pretty about sweet. What? About the legacy, about of, legacy. The legacy of Dracula. That's and yeah. And about yeah, she, and she's a... the like executor of his estate and sells all the merch and everything now and yeah. Yeah, and she she was really informative about like the how I mean it was sort of more of like a pop culture episode mm. where it's talking about like how he really helped like shape the rights that actors get in Hollywood. They now. That's treated true. him yeah, so true. bad. They like, were yeah. absolutely yeah, paying they were him treated so And then little. made fun of him for being yeah. like addicted to like painkillers as if they weren't yeah. the reason his yeah, body was. Right. Yeah. yeah. So for all these reasons, yeah. I'm going to put him at the top. Yeah. Top yeah. 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 All right. Frankenstein. Yeah, so Frankenstein. A lot of pathos, pathos in this one. Yeah. It also mm. comes out same year as Dracula. Um, also has a lot more like stunts. I'm I'm gonna put him at the top. Top S yeah. above S. Dracula or below uh, Dracula? I don't know if it matters. They're on the same tier. Actually, you know what? No, put him one tier down. This is the, this is like the the, the oh, top the top left corner. There's two. Okay, that's the days you're saying about horizontally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Got it. You saying bump him down to A? Or yeah, bump him... him down to A. Okay, actually. but he's still A plus. He's still A plus. A plus. Yeah, better okay. than the creature from the black. Got it. Because of his emotional problems. Uh, Invisible Man. Ugh. Uh, I'm gonna put him at D. Straight to D moment. Yeah, I don't Straight like the D. I'm just put that down there. It doesn't give what's needed. I don't know. Yeah. Phantom of the Opera. Phantom of the Opera. Phantom of the Opera is kind of funny because he's a regular ass dude. Like, there's <laughs> yeah. there's nothing else going on there. Like, yeah. So in I know that they didn't do this in the movie, but like in the stage play, he like shoots fireballs and stuff. Why does he do what? that? Like, where does that come <laughs> from? Again, he's he just lives Why? in the sewer. You'd think he'd be worse he's at it. Spectral. Um, I don't. Yeah. What? This is Lon Chaney Senior, who he did his own makeup and stuff, didn't he? And is this the one where he like? No, I'm sorry. For Quasimodo, he made like a back brace that like gave him permanent back pain. Yeah. Which I yeah. could also do. <laughs> I feel. Where create a back brace that permanently injures myself. Um, I've never really understood his whole thing. I'm gonna put him on C. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, the bride of Frankenstein. I also love this one. Um, there's also, you know, you've got a bride of Frankenstein, but you also got brides of Dracula who appear in various movies. Yeah. That's another yes. spiel for another day. But uh. And, you know, I feel like those women would have a lot in common to talk about. Uh, yeah. Especially since the whole deal of Bride of Frankenstein is, like, literally being yeah. stitched out of body parts to provide a womb, like, issue. Yeah, yeah. Problematic, yeah. frankly. Yeah. Uh, I'm Problem. Gonna... This, yeah. is, this is going to uh, uh, be the least surprising thing I've ever said, but I also know the uh, <laughs> X-Men character who is inspired by that. But keep going. Wow, that was a good addition. Uh, nope. <laughs> I'm going to put her first, and I'm actually going to put her ahead of Bella Gosset. All the way, tip top of S. Yes. Because, Hell yeah. Well, she's, bare, she's got very little screen time, but honestly, I think she works it with what she's got. Like, her very minimum, like, screaming, I love that. So, so raw. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're just riffing about how Autobot didn't... This is, doesn't have anything to do with what you're talking about. Oh, okay. Oh, no, but someone said the word beta cuck in my chat. Eric gives it. beta cuck. He does. Beta cuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't... My Our Autobot didn't have to flag it, and so I was like, damn. <laughs> like, who who said it first? Uh, apparently, here, which Jada did. But you're not allowed to say beta cuck on this? Or you're, it's discouraged? Uh, the auto moderator flags no, me, like, just, you guys cool with yeah, that? Yeah, we have, like... Oh. I see. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I'm is that so okay? <laughs> we usually say yes. Um, I did also have to. The most recent word <laughs> I had to allow from last week was bumhole. So. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I look at it, I start like laughing a little bit because it's like my most recent action that I've allowed. <laughs> so I keep just, just look in the bottom allowed left corner bumhole. of my screen. It just says bumhole. Like, we, we really had to work hard to teach yeah. the auto mod that like saying gay in a twitch chat isn't oh, yeah. always Negative. calling someone a slur yeah yeah like, it can true. be positive 
And it's like, what? what? You're like teaching Tarzan, like, how to <laughs> well, like, join civilized society or whatever Tarzan does. Literally. Literally. And like a lot of See, chat members and, and us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A lot of like chat members and us are queer in some degree. And so we were made a joke about it, hate criming us because it just really did not want us to say like any, <laughs> any like, reclaimed do word. Do you feel like you all? should be saying that? <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, should you be Don't saying remember. queer that way? Like, you, yes, I should. Okay. You're like, <laughs> yeah, one of those queers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what odd. That's what Nightbot said. <laughs> Nightbot disrespected Tater Tot. Anyway, it's oh. not that queer. Oh, icon. Tater Tot's back. No. Oh, sorry, not that guy. No, this guy Tot. Oh, Tater. 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 Tater Tot. Tater Tot. <laughs> Tater. Tater. Summer okay. up. Up next. The mummy? The okay, mummy. I've never understood mummies. Like, what does a mummy do when it catches you? What do they do? They just wake up. They <laughs> strangle you, I think. Like, but you don't have to be a mummy Curse to do bra? that. Like, and and they're also I guess very they slow. That. And they're also, very slow. they're very slow. And they're also, slow. so easy. Like, it's such a specific situation. I feel like the it's problem so with, like... I mean, I guess Frankenstein's a pretty specific situation too, but like, I feel like the vampire issue is like they could be anywhere. Like they, yeah, like, yeah. But yeah. a mummy, you have to go find and then walk slowly away from it. Like, <laughs> you very explicitly need to disturb a grave. Like I, 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 I bet, but I bet for like Victorian English upon. guys, they were yeah. like, I'm disturbing graves all the They're time. Like, how can I be expected to know when I'm not disturbing a grave? Yeah. Like, and it's also from such a very specific like. <laughs> era of being f obsessed with like ancient egypt that i'm like that's yeah. kind of dated you know like do, yeah. do mummies try to take your organs do they yeah their I own organs know. have been taken yeah they're so trying to get your sense. brain to back. replace yeah, and put it up their, their own up their nose, nose. <laughs> like, yeah. but from what i understand about mummies is that they're literally in a room of their own jarred organs so grab those that's like part of it. right it's like, already jarred <laughs> Oh, they're dry. You can't, you can't use them. They're anymore. like, ugh, like, I'm a pharaoh or whatever. Like, <laughs> so, I mean, Boris yeah. Karloff's great, but I'm going to put the mummy uh, D. Bottom of D? Uh, oh. Top of D, I top guess. Top of D. I, okay. I really wow. like the Invisible Man. I think he's lame. And the Wolfman? <laughs> I like the Wolfman. This is also another later one uh, where they, I mean, the whole wolf man transformation they had to glue hair to that guy's face like that's, that's a cool. pretty involved yeah, it's thing pretty, yeah. it's pretty cool. also yeah. the guy so lon cheney jr plays the wolf band and he uh he just really liked it he was he talked about like how much he enjoyed playing the wolf man and how he felt like that was his role but i always okay people who play dracula hate playing dracula that's the thing bella Gosi doesn't like it gloria holden doesn't like it christopher lee doesn't like it we might have one person who likes it right who? Nicholas Cage. Oh, Nicholas Cage. He was oh, really exception well, that proves the rule, though. Yeah. He is yeah. the exception that proves the rule, yeah. and he's like, yeah. I, you can't create a rule that like encompasses Nicholas Cage. He's oh like, he, he's on yeah. some other shit. Can I can I derail this again by Please. saying my favorite Nicholas Cage anecdote? Please. So it asked about um um God. Is it season of the witch? We're an interview with him. He was just like, I said yes to this movie because I read that I take a crossbow bolt to the eye, and I thought I've always wanted to take a crossbow bolt in the eye for a film. That's a pretty good Nicholas Cage. <laughs> Thank him. you. He's Italian, so it's so it's, it's in like the high natural. mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Reach back oh to that shares single Italian ancestor. You That's guys right. <laughs> for, he's, he is at most my Mr. fourth Italy. cousin. <laughs> yeah, if he's Italian American, yeah. he's at most at most my fourth cousin. That's how bottlenecked we were. That's true. I was actually really it's surprised wild. that Nicholas Cage had never played Dracula, and he did a good job. Yeah. In Renfield, wow. I felt I saw it opening night with the other Renheads, uh, <laughs> obviously, and I saw obviously. Last Forge of the Demeter uh, opening night too. Oh hell the yeah! One with month the other, with the other, with the other Liam heads. Yes, yeah. that's yeah. what that was. Uh, so I'm gonna put him top tier after Dracula. Nice, nice. So dang bottom of S. It's I, polarizing. We made a valley. We made a valley. In this is here. good. This is good. I like. This I know. A lot. This is a I like this valley. It's like there's, you know, nobody's in between. You're either really good or you suck shit. You do suck Cause shit. Because you, you do nothing. Take that, Lon Chaney Sr. Lon Chaney Jr., yeah. you're fine. You're fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm going to try to sum this up. And it's, uh, are you a woman or anything else? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> women straight to the top. Yes. <laughs> women straight to the top. Anything else, you fall somewhere below. That's pretty much it. Um, wow. Thank thank you so much for answering all of our questions that we curated for you being on the show and spending your most of the night in in Dom's place. Uh, we were planning on you only being here for two hours, but look at this. I know, but I had You're so almost much to You had so much to say. I had Jesus. way and more prepared than so I pared it down. Like, <laughs> no, after oh we talked God. yesterday, I was like, this was not the vibe I need to. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, well, maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll have to Thanks. get in contact with Thank you. Thank you for chat. Both. Thank you for chat yeah. for being, like, the vibe Summer didn't know yeah. she needed. <laughs> Thank you. Chat was, like, extremely into this, and, I don't know, maybe we gotta, like, bring you back on for, like, a bonus Patreon episode of all of the notes you did not reveal, and, or maybe a secret sleuthing session. I don't know. Your Wikipedia oh skills are very impressive. I love Wikipedia. <laughs> I love to sleuth. I love to know. Oh I have to know. You have to know. Oh my god! I Amazing. think I think Summer might have like uh, uh, unleashed like a paradigm shift. Where now I feel like <laughs> if 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 we're sleuthing someone with a Wikipedia page, we're looking at the edits. How could you oh not? We haven't That's been. So I don't think we have really been. Most a lot of people we've had on the show don't have Wikipedia pages, but some of them definitely. Oh yes, do. but when we get Jason like, Jackson on the show, two. I know he's a yeah. folklorist with a Wikipedia page. Yeah. Yeah, we get too, we get too, like, we know them, so we get a little too, like, inside our, you know, inside our friend group about it or whatever. We know them, so we just ask their friend instead of look at the publicly available information about them. Interesting. Anyway. Um, good game. Thanks for coming on the show. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Good <laughs> games. Yeah. GG's. Um, we have about... Oh, third... before... Yeah, if you haven't done it, if you haven't done it, people, ladders in chat. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> um this is like our kind of like chat like channel folklore for hype good game like great job and it's a subscriber it's a round of applause just, when the ladders are all in applause. it's a round of applause yeah so um people drop them um oh they're coming there in we here go. we go we'll make a giant ladders. ladders. There Let's go. thank you <laughs> yeah make a big make it a big ladder train so um yeah and also people are spamming our witches emote they've been doing that the whole time we have a little witch emote uh so thanks for well, it's a little it's a little, cat, it's a little cat it's a little cat uh, it's a cat it's hard to tell it's like yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah it's oh, a cat with a broom and a little nice. hat on the broom <laughs> yeah so witches um we we love a witch on our show so thank you for joining and that clip too <laughs> oh i my forgot God. we made that command i forgot long. we made that i forgot we made that a big command too <laughs> We also have our little garlic man. This is our vampire who's garlic, also. Aw, um, so complicated. Cute. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah. What a fraud existence. Oh, yeah. no. I mean, his eyes really tell the story. Yeah, he's, he's closely at he's it. haunted. <laughs> yeah, truly really haunted. I don't envy uh, it, sir. Oh, and yeah. thanks for the 1001 bits. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um... Yeah, so I guess uh, normally this is like your natural out if if you'd like to take a break and head out, but we only have thirty minutes left on the show. If you want to just knock out that boss battle in in uh, Resident Evil again, I, I would know. like to take the a break, puzzle actually. in the middle of the puzzle. What do you think? I can't do puzzles. One break. I don't fight enemies okay. or do puzzles. I just walk around. Well, I mean, right. we could. Tom, what do you think? Yeah, we could play Summer off with more witch sweeps in chat as she exits. Okay. That, that works. Fun. Wish sweep. Wish sweep. Wish sweep. Wish sweep. Wish sweep. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> I'll see myself.